guys, welcome back. So I'm just kind of chilling on my bedroom floor here for the intro of this video, but I wanted to share with you all of the recipes that I've been cooking over the past about week, week and a half or so. I've been loving this, and so let me know down below or give this video a thumbs up if you love seeing the recipes that I'm making. I thought since I film all these videos with my vlog camera that you probably wouldn't mind if we just kind of real chill, relaxed here with my camera on my carpet in my bedroom instead of dragging all my lighting out and stuff like that. I don't know about you, but I really like just raw, real things um, just in general. And so this is the kind of uh, video footage that I enjoy watching. But anyways, we have to talk about some of the most delicious things that I have been making. And I will leave all of the recipes below. In a few of the meals, it wasn't really a recipe per se, but I did show you or tell you what I did. So for the first recipe, I got it out of this magazine. This is a Better Homes and Gardens magazine. This is their special interest publications, and you can find this at Walmart in a magazine section or at the checkout line, probably at Target or your local grocery store. And I saw this recipe. Do you like mac and cheese? <laughs> Do you like bacon? Do you like butternut squash? Because I found a new obsession in the fall butternut squash it's just it's so delicious so anyways this was a really good comfort meal I believe I made this on a Sunday and we had it while watching football I think we had meatloaf actually as a side and I forgot to film the footage of the recipe so I will just put the recipe in the description box but it actually turned out really well or really good as well so basically get yourself some butternut squash get some Gruyere cheese some bacon some onions you guys, so delicious. It turned out really well. The next recipe was also, it was one of those recipes where I stumbled upon it because I had some things left over in the fridge that I needed to use up. And that's actually how I cook or I think about my meals or I plan my next meal. It's all based off of what's A, needs to get used up in the fridge, what do I have a little bit of that I could add to something? Or what did I make last night that I can then turn into a new dish kind of situation? So this next recipe is an apple Gouda stuffed chicken. And I have to tell you, Gouda cheese is fantastic. It is amazing. It's delicious. I didn't you really even care about a lot of cheeses um, before I met Gouda. And Gouda just made me fall in love. It's so good. But actually, the other standout situation in this recipe is the Honeycrisp apples. And I've never bought a Honeycrisp apple either. Um, where have I been? Delicious, delicious apple. Wonderful to eat on its own. But you pair that with some ooey gooey cheese and some fresh thyme. And then a chicken. Oh, such a delicious meal. My kids loved this recipe. I made some cinnamon roasted yams to serve along with it. Now where I got this recipe from is Rach Cook's blog and she had served it with a smoky paprika yam, but I thought I had smoky paprika, went to the store, thought, ah, I don't need to buy that. I didn't have it, so I just did cinnamon. And actually cinnamon pairs really well with yams. I like yams with just salt and pepper too, but the cinnamon was just a really nice extra flavor and it paired really well with the flavors of the chicken. Tonight's dinner is going to be very simple. In fact, part of it I'm not even making. This is Trader Joe's cauliflower gnocchi. This is the part I'm not making. I bought it. We are gonna saute this up in the pan, per the instructions. And then this summer I had made and froze a bunch of pesto. I made a ton of it. So now, all I have to do is cook this, add this, a little fresh Parmesan, voila, dinner. So for tonight's dinner, we are going to be having a side salad as our side dish. So I just have some romaine lettuce with some spinach leaves, cucumbers, carrots, I have some radishes, some tomatoes, little cheddar. We love these Parmesan crisps and of course some croutons. We like the ranch ones. So everybody has a little side salad. This is a homemade dill dressing. There's only five ingredients in this, and then I just store it inside these nice mason jars. I really find making dressings and storing them in mason jars is so cute, and it's very simple yet practical. And when I make my balsamic uh, vinegar dressing, I will just put it in a, like I'll add all the ingredients to the jar itself, shake it up, and it's done. And then for our main course, we are going to be having a ravioli with this sauce. Got this at Trader Joe's. This is a pasta sauce that has pumpkin and butternut squash in it. 
Oh my gosh, it smells good. I haven't even tasted it yet, but that is keeping warm in there. And then we're gonna do raviolis. Um, my husband and I are gonna have these Brussels sprouts and caramelized onion ravioli. Last time, my kids didn't love the ravioli, and I don't know why. Maybe they just, I don't know. So that's for him and I, and then for them, I'm going to make some spaghetti. And I buy the veggie ones because there's a good serving of carrot, tomato, and spinach in there, so it's a good way to get in those veggies for your kids. I'm happy to report that that jar of pasta sauce from Trader Joe's is phenomenal. It is seasonal. Um, I don't know how long they'll be selling it, but go get one because the kids, my husband, everybody, ugh, so good. All right, for tonight's recipe, actually it is 10 in the morning. This is gonna be a slow cooker recipe. So this is some sauteed yellow onions, sweet onions, whatever kind you want. The recipe called for a couple of them, but I had about one and a half, so that'll do. So we're just gonna cook those down and I'm about to add some red wine, minced garlic, and tomato paste. But what we're doing is a, uh, I seared some beef bone-in short ribs in the pan, put salt and pepper, salt, not pepper, but just salt on them. And then I cut up some carrots. We have two cups of beef broth in here, some fresh thyme, a bay leaf, and then we're gonna add in the onions, and we're gonna make a reduction in just a moment. So, I just added a tablespoon of tomato paste, and now I'm gonna add in my delicious red wine. This is a Cabernet. And I'm gonna put in the garlic as well, and I'm gonna cook this and boil this down to create a really lovely sauce to pour over the meat. And then I'm gonna put a lid on that meat and potatoes, or not potatoes, meat and carrots, and cook it for six to eight hours, and then later we're gonna thicken it up with some cornstarch. This is the wine that I poured in there. This is a black cassis, is that how you say that? Cabernet, I just picked this up. I have never tried it before. I took a little sip because a, a good cook needs to sample what she creates, right? I know it's morning, but I just needed to sip it to make sure it was gonna be good tonight, but it's absolutely delicious. So, um, and then of course, the remainder is what we will serve with tonight's meal. So for tonight's dinner, I have made a creamy potato and sausage with kale soup, kind of a spin on that Olive Garden Zuppa Toscana, I believe it's called. So I just sauteed up some Italian sausage, whatever kind you would like, with some onions. Then I chopped it up into kind of like chunks because then it kind of mimics the size of the potatoes. And um, then I added in some chicken stock, two, let's see, two containers of chicken stock, which would be two quarts of chicken stock, two cans of coconut milk. That way it is dairy free. You could also do half and half if you'd like. Of course, you could always put some butter in here as well. Um, and then a lot, I had a lot of leftover kale, but this is about, oh gosh, probably goodness, at least four cups of kale here, but it cooks down nicely. Salt and pepper, of course, some fresh thyme, some fresh basil, what else am I forgetting? Um, I think that's really it. It really came together quite quickly and I just simmered it until the potatoes were nice and tender. But now I always make my um, dinners in the morning because it's hectic when the kids get home with homework and all that. So it's about 10 o'clock in the morning right now, so this is ready to serve. But I will put it on low for a while just to kind of have all the flavors meld together. I'll check it one more time to make sure it doesn't need any more salt. So I salt while I'm cooking, I salt after it's been cooking, and then throughout the day I will check it as well um, to really make sure that my soup has some good flavor. So tonight's dinner is a complete experiment. It is all based off of this bottle of curry sauce that I bought at Trader Joe's. I, it smells so good. I really hope that this is successful. <laughs> um, you could do this without that. You could use actual curry. And, but what we're gonna do is the shredded chicken version in the crock pot because it cooks itself. And I'm getting kind of a late start today, so we're gonna do this uh, chicken on high for four hours instead of low for six to eight. So all I did was salt and pepper the whole chicken breasts and pour in that sauce. Never done this before, so I'm hoping this turns out, but we're gonna shred the chicken and then I'm gonna throw in a bag of frozen vegetables so there's some veggies in here. And we are gonna serve that over rice. 
best investment, well, this isn't even expensive, but the best little appliance we bought, and we own several, because, you know, you get sucked in, um, is a rice cooker. It never fails us, unless you don't put the right amount of water in. Um, but we're going to be doing jasmine rice tonight, and so you do need to soak that for, like, half hour before you turn it on, otherwise it gets, it doesn't cook all the way right. Like, it gets hard, and I know this because I tried serving hard rice one night. It didn't go over so well. But anyway, so it's going to be a quick dinner. That cooks itself. That cooks itself. Voila. Dinner. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's recipes. Let me know if this is something you would like me to do weekly or bi-weekly or even just once a month. Or just share with you recipes that A turned out that I would remake again. I didn't film any failed recipe attempts and I didn't film the nights that we had Taco Bell or McDonald's. Maybe I should include that too. Let me know if you're okay with that. I do enjoy cooking, and I cook most nights of the week, but you know, there are nights where you just don't want to, you just want to open something up, or where you want to call somebody on the telephone. We had Chinese last night, and it was so good. You know, sometimes you just have a craving, and you gotta fulfill it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.